I'm pretty happy to do this video because it's a break from these weird times that we're going through and it, uh, it's kind of refreshing to just talk about cameras <laughs> and I've got some neat cameras to show you here um, of course you you know that uh, sometime last year I purchased this the uh, Penef from Olympus which I love I absolutely love so I did an initial review of the camera after I bought it and it obviously did not disappoint and it still does not disappoint so I'm super happy that I, I bought this camera. It's an incredibly light and compact um, and capable camera. It's ideal for traveling um, and I love using it. But I've got something else here that I want to show you. I've also got this one. This is the uh, EM1 Mark III, also from Olympus. So this is the um, next to the flagship, so a step below the flagship camera from the Olympus. Um, and I've been meaning to get a hands-on look at this camera for quite some time. And I'm happy uh, to say that uh, the folks at Olympus Romania were able to send it to me recently along with a couple of lenses to have a look at it. So this is this camera, right? Um, and then I also have another camera that I want to show you. Ta-da! The M1X. This is the flagship from Olympus. And this camera, boy, this camera really got my juices going when it uh, was introduced um, in 2019, I believe. So the point of this video is to have a look at these three cameras side by side, which is something that I've wanted to do ever since these cameras came out. Um, but first, why don't we talk about the elephant in the room, right? And the elephant in the room is the sale of Olympus uh, cameras, uh, the, the camera division from Olympus to uh, Japan Industrial Partners. Now, I don't have any more um, news to tell you about that than what you've already read online, if you're interested in Olympus cameras, that is. Um, but it certainly, as an Olympus camera owner, and I've, I have several Olympus cameras, I wonder about that too. So what's going to happen? And um, I'm not sure. It remains to be seen. But what I do want to say is that in the meantime, all of these cameras work just fine. So, you know, digital cameras, they, they won't last as long as analog cameras because those are purely mechanical. And as long as something mechanical doesn't break due to overuse or some kind of accident, then they're going to last you a lifetime. Well, digital cameras, unfortunately, will only last you five, ten years, depending on the use, maybe 15 or 20 years. Uh, we'll see. Um, but the fact of the matter remains that these cameras are available and they're working fine. And so whatever happens to Olympus uh, cameras down the road, these are going to be working for their lifetime. So if you love Olympus cameras and you love the Micro Four Thirds format, then I would say not to worry about it for now. Um, and of course, I also have this one. This one is the E3, which came out in 2007. Uh, and it's still working perfectly. So how many years has it been since 2007? It's been 13, 14 years, almost 14, because I launched uh, this one in October, I believe, of 2007, is when I went to the launch party in NYC uh, for it. So this has been working. Well, I haven't had this particular camera since 2007, because I bought this one used. But these cam this camera has been working since the time that it was made, and it's been 13, 14 years. So I wouldn't worry so much about, uh, about what's going to happen to Olympus, uh, because their cameras work, and they work for a long time. Right. Now, first impressions uh, from these cameras, because this is the first time I've had this camera for about a week and a half now. And I just got this one yesterday, and I've been using it uh, quite a bit since then to try to get a handle on how it's different from the M1X, and of course how it's different from the pen. Uh, and I'm going to put um, 
I'm going to insert as I talk some footage of the three cameras together so you can see see the difference uh, between their design, the difference in size, and that sort of thing. Um, and I'm, I'm, I don't want to, this review to be just a spewing forth of the uh, tech specs because um, that's going to be boring. I want to talk about my thoughts about these cameras. I mean, how, how do they feel to me? And uh, how do they fit my needs? And uh, give you my impressions. And that might be a little more interesting. And I'm going to try to say things that I haven't heard others say about these cameras. Right. First off, the M1X, it's incredibly light incredibly light for its size. Um, I could not believe how light it was when it arrived. Like, this, surely this can't be, maybe it's a mock-up. No, it's the actual camera. It's very light and very sturdy. And I love the fact that the grips are so well made, both the uh, horizontal grip and the vertical grip. Now, I don't know if my hands are bigger or smaller than other people's hands. I don't really go around comparing that kind of stuff, but what I can tell you is that my hands, my fingers fit perfectly in here. Uh, and it's angled in such a way that you can't, it can't fall out of your hands. It just can't. Um, and also the vertical grip is so nice. So good. And it gives you even more room, right, to spread your fingers. It's beautiful, beautiful stuff. And it's got these indentations here on the back which you might or might not be able to see, but if not, you'll see it in the close-up footage that I insert here in this video. It's got that indentation there and there for your thumb to make sure that you can really hold on to it and it doesn't fall out of your hand. And I love that the grips are angled slightly inward here so that I can hold it like this loosely when I'm just walking around with it. And it's the same here. It doesn't fall, you see. And I'm holding it very loosely between my just my index and my middle finger and my thumb, so it's it's really nicely made. Yeah, I love all the buttons. I just love the extra buttons um, that I get. Uh, it's wonderful, and of course, uh, because it's got the integrated grip, it's got two camera bays. I'm sure you probably know that from the specs already. But the neat thing, of course, is that it uses the same batteries as the EM1, um, the EM1 Mark III, and the EM1 Mark II, actually same batteries and that means if you use these cameras this is like your main camera and this is the backup camera batteries are fully interchangeable and that's beautiful um, I love that even though they didn't need to do this they did it anyway look they, they put they duplicated these two buttons right one of them is the depth of field preview and the other one is the white balance the one touch white balance button of course you can assign any functions that you want to them but they still made two sets, so one for the horizontal grip and one for the vertical grip. I mean, that's, that's Olympus right there for you. It's such a good value because think about how much it costs you to get the flagship camera of, from another brand. How much is it? Is it $6,000, seven, dollars dollars $9,000, $10,000 for some brands? And the, the flagship from Olympus, I think when it came out, it was about 3000 something. And uh, now you can probably get it for around $2,000, which is a great, great deal for a flagship camera. And believe me when I say this, it, it really is packed full of features. It's a flagship. The user manual is over 600 pages long, so good luck reading through that. <laughs> yeah. And I just love all the buttons, and uh, the customization is amazing. Yeah, so yeah, this is a wonderful camera. Um, Let's talk a bit about the uh, EM1 Mark III, or for that matter, the EM1 Mark II, because they have the same design except for a few buttons rearranged on the back, and so, yeah, and different badging here on the front. Um, smaller than I imagined it to be. For some reason, I thought this was a little bigger. Um, and so, the grip now, I have a bit of an issue with it because um, my hand does not fit fully around the grip. You see my, my pinky is just sort of hanging around uh, underneath the camera. And I suppose that's okay. And it's certainly okay with lighter lenses. So for example, 
Well, um, let me just show you. I'll put on the the uh, the uh, 25 millimeter f1.2, which is a pro lens, um, but it's still because it's so well made, it's it's quite light for for its all metal construction and uh, all the different lens elements in it. So if I put this on, there we go. It's still light enough to hold, you see. And it's still very, very nice to use. But what I've heard about the M1 Mark III and the M1 Mark II from other Olympus users is that the rubber grip tends to come apart uh, or to, to, um, to come off the camera body. And I think that's what happens when you have a larger lens attached to it. So let me show you what I mean. If I were to take this camera now, which works just great with the smaller lenses, with the way the grip is designed, but if I were to stick a big lens on it, like the uh, 40 to 150 f2.8, which is a pro lens, quite a hefty construction, very high quality lens. I stick that on there, right? And that's just a lens hood, which extends uh, directly from the camera body. But if I stick this lens on there, even though I can support it with my hand on the grip here, or I can just simply put my hand here to support it, all of a sudden, this camera's grip becomes too small. The lens is too heavy for it, and I find that I'm exerting undue pressure right on the top of the grip, exactly where people are complaining that the rubber comes off the camera body. And it's clear why that happens. So this camera works great with the lighter lenses, with the grip the way it is. Perhaps if you have a smaller hand than me, and your fingers can fit comfortably there, you're gonna be just fine. But for those of us with fat fingers like me, uh, it's quite possible that the rubber will suffer from the pressure exerted on it to hold the bigger lenses, and then you can have issues. Um, imagine if, if this is uncomfortable now, imagine how uncomfortable this can be with a 300 millimeter f4 pro lens, or with a new zoom that just came out, which is even heftier. Was it 150 to 400? Or is it one to 500? So one to 400. I can't remember the focal range, but anyway, the big zoom that just sold out, uh, that uh, as soon as it came out, all the inventory sold out and people can't get it now, that one. So imagine how much more difficult it is with that. And look, I appreciate why Olympus did this, right? They wanted a very portable camera, and this is incredibly portable. Um, it's amazingly portable, actually. And uh, if you just use it, for example, for event photography, where you use smaller lenses, um, lighter lenses, then it's going to be great for you. But the problem is going to come in when you use a longer, heavier lens. So if you do that, I would suggest that you get the M1X. It's not that much more expensive now. So it's worth it. And it's, the grip on this is amazing. Oh my gosh, it feels so good with the larger lenses. You can really hold it well. Um, Right, so let me switch back to a lighter lens, just for the fun of it, so you can see. See, I had on the 25 millimeter f1.2 before, and now I have the 25 millimeter f1.8 on it. Look, it becomes a joy to use now. It's incredibly, incredibly light to use. You don't, even, you don't worry anymore about the floating pinky. You can use it so well, and it's so balanced, so nicely balanced now. And this is going to be the case probably with all of the lighter lenses, including the 12 to 40 f2.8 or the new 12 to 45 at 4. Um, perhaps even the 12 to 100, although that's probably a little on the heftier side for this kind of body for my hands. So, yeah. Good stuff. Now, what I would also say is that same color science between these two cameras. So I've tested them. I did video with them, same settings. I did photos with them, same settings. The transition between them was seamless. I could not tell the difference between the photos uh, between them in editing or the videos in editing. As long as they both had the same settings, it's beautiful. So that's good to know for, the wor uh, for those of you who are worried about workflows, uh, workflow issues here. Um, now, I cannot say the same thing between the Pen F and this one, 
or the M1X. Uh, the Pen F being an older camera, um, it uses a different color science, and so I find that I'm, I have to adjust my presets in Lightroom as I edit photos. And it's the same with the video. I have to make sure that the colors match between them. And it's not hard to do, but it's just uh, you have to remember now for, for workflow related issues that the color science is different and you need different adjustments. Comparing the, the grip size with the E3, you can see that I can really set all three of my fingers here on the grip. And even with a larger lens like the 40 to 150, uh, 3.5 to 4.5, which is the premium version of the standard 40 to 150. Um, there's no problem holding it. It's, it's quite nice. I love using this camera, by the way, even though it's older. I, I, love, I love using it. It's so wonderful. Um, yeah, it's a testament to how well Olympus makes cameras. And I, I love Olympus cameras. What can I say? Um, but you can see here with the E3, because they were still on the 4 3rd system back then, that the camera was bigger, that the lenses were bigger, and the grip was consequently bigger. Now, the E3 also came with an optional vertical grip, which Olympus, I believe, chose to make optional because they were trying to emphasize the portability of their system even back when they were making the four-thirds uh, cameras and lenses. And so if they'd, if they'd included the vertical grip standard on the camera, it would have seemed so bulky that I think people would have gone, well, what's the advantage here? Of course, the advantage was readily apparent when you picked up their pro lenses and paired them with the camera because those pro lenses are still legendary to this day. I mean, F2.0 F2 for, uh, for their pro line of zooms is just amazing. And even today, I don't know of any uh, manufacturer that, 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 that makes F2.0 standard zooms and telephoto zooms. I mean, I believe Canon came out with a 24 to 70 f2 for their uh, mirrorless line of cameras. But imagine it's been 13 years since uh, Olympus came out with them, and Canon is just now catching up. And that's, of course, the issue with, uh, or the case with all of the innovations that Olympus introduces in their cameras. They're typically the first to introduce them, like the supersonic wave filter, the cleaning of the sensor, you know, the dust reduction system. Um, the electronic viewfinder, the, uh, the mirrorless cameras, the, uh, the, uh, using the display to shoot uh, photos. That the, the term for that escapes me now, but they were the first to come up with it uh, on the E330, I believe, which is a ca another camera that I bought uh, just to have it for my personal collection because I, I think it's an important milestone in their camera development. So yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. So all the stuff, oh, the five axis image stabilization, all the stuff that you're seeing in recent years appear among the other brands, Olympus came up with it first. So yeah. So um, just to further explain the, the grip thing. So of course, when Olympus went to micro four thirds, they came out with a smaller format camera because this is the, I guess the follow up to this. Everything is smaller, of course, and they made the grip smaller. But then the issue comes in when you use larger lenses. Uh, now, if you were to mount a longer lens on this camera, but a longer lens that's from the premium line, not the pro line, and that means it's a lot lighter because it's made of uh, plastic, not metal. See, like the, the 75 to 300 where the lens hood actually makes up most of the most of the lens uh, most of the length of the lens just a second i want to take the lens hood off so this is the actual lens right here now with this kind of a lens even though it's long you have no issues with the grip once again extended still no issues with the grip but as soon as you start attaching a longer lens to this i think you're going to run into issues so that's something to keep in mind so i would say if you love traveling a lot and you don't want to pack too much gear go with a pen camera I don't know what's gonna happen with a pen line because the pen F should have been updated uh, at some point but it hasn't gotten updated and I don't know if the new owners of the camera division will update it which would be a pity because it's a wonderful little camera but um, 
this is the ideal camera for traveling and of course if you have one of these cameras do yourself a favor please don't get the pro lenses for it um, because it's not going to work out well uh, for a long time actually i i wanted to get the pro lenses for the pen and thank goodness i didn't and now i just got to test them because it's too heavy for this kind of body if you think they're awkward on the uh, em1 mark III or the mark ii body the heavier lenses then even the the 25 millimeter lens which works just fine on that kind of body on the pen f it feels so heavy so heavy and you, you can't hold it well in your hand you're gonna have wrist issues um and that's another issue of course for those of you who maybe are too young to give a to give a damn about this stuff you you're gonna say i'm gonna power right through it i don't care I like the portability of the M1 Mark II and I'm just going to get this camera with the pro lenses and it's going to work out just fine. Later on, you're going to find out that you want to uh, care about ergonomics and you want to care about proper grip. So shell out a few more hundreds of bucks and get the M1 X. Uh, yeah. So right. So as you can see, even a light lens like the 25mm f1.2 on a Pen F body, you just cannot hold it right and you have to support it with your hand and there goes the portability of the camera um, so get the lighter lenses you know if I stick on the 25 millimeter f1.8 which is the premium lens right this is very very light um, then this is ideal for this camera body it works great and it's the same with the uh, 70 millimeter f1.8 which is super light even though it's got a metal body and of course the 45 millimeter i had it here somewhere i don't know what i did with it the the uh, if it's the plastic version of that lens because i believe they also came out with a metal version of it the plastic version is super super light and you think when you see it you you, you think oh my goodness this lens surely won't perform well but it's amazing and it's super light and it fits just amazingly well on the Pen F body or any of the Pen line cameras. So yeah, that's, that's going to be my advice for you. Pair the camera body with the right lens line uh, to get the best enjoyment out of your camera. So for the Pen camera line, stick with the very light lenses, smaller lenses, and you're going to love using it. Now, if you spring for the more expensive bodies, the more pro bodies, like the M1 Mark II or III, then yeah, you can go with heavier lenses. Um, but if you're going to go with the pro lenses and you really want to use the telephoto zooms, then by all means get the M1 Mark X, uh, the M1X, because that's the one that's going to fit the bill for that. Just uh, in terms of differences between the M1X and the M1 Mark II, or Mark III rather, which I have here, um, the M1 Mark III of course has the Starry Night uh, autofocus, which is pretty amazing for those of you who do um, star trails or any kind of astrophotography, um, because as you know, it's always hard to focus a camera at night. Um, on the stars it's very difficult to do it manually especially when you're in bulb mode and it's just uh, uh, but this one has that um, other than that these two cameras are identical in terms of features um, and i think at some point the m1x will also get the starry night autofocus um, it's probably going to make it through a firmware update Another difference uh, between the two cameras, and of course between the, um, the Pen F as well and the M1 Mark II, is the shutter mechanism. The shutters are all different on all three of these cameras. So on the Pen F, the shutter is uh, fairly pronounced, and there's also a bit, of a, a bit of a shake when you press it. So if you're in macro mode, or if you're in a mode where uh, you need the, the focus to be tack sharp and the camera not to move. They actually adjust, the, uh, they actually recommend directly from Olympus that you use um, a shutter mode called a silent or anti shock, uh, which introduces a very small fraction of a second delay between the time that you press the shutter button and the shutter uh, fully completes the open close cycle. 
And so the shutter sound is also quite different, and that's what gives it away that there are different shutter mechanisms. Uh, on the M1 Mark III, the shutter is quite nice, very smooth, works amazingly well. But I have to say that I was blown away by the shutter mechanism on the M1X. It is so smooth, it's so fast, it's just unbelievable. It's like butter. <laughs> it's so nice. It just it just really drives home the point that this is flagship camera and it's the best that they make. And it's lovely, lovely. I just loved using this camera. That's what that sounds like. Let me stick a lens on so you can uh, perhaps hear it with a lens. See, it's almost, it's barely audible now. So good, so responsive. Let me show you what it sounds like on the M1 Mark III. See, just as smooth, well actually not as smooth as the M1X, just a touch different, and perhaps it's just the acoustics of the body, it could be the same shutter mechanism, I'm not sure, but sounds a lot faster and a lot smoother on the, um, on the M1X, although this is nothing to, to, to complain about at all. Now here's what it sounds like on the Pen F. Different right? Louder, slower. So that's something to keep in mind. Great travel camera, but if you need fast photography, even though this has a burst mode, has a, it can take a lot of photos per second. I would say don't stress the camera. This, this was designed for a different kind of photography than, than this camera, right? And obviously, than this camera. This is the beast that can do what you need to do if you need fast photography. And of course, this, this camera has those special autofocus modes that you kept hearing about. And yeah, they work just as well as advertised. I have no complaints about that. I think uh, while I have these cameras on loan from Olympus Romania, I'm going to do uh, perhaps a comparison between the, uh, the 25mm f1.8 and the uh, the 25mm f1.2 lenses just for those of you who are on the fence about the differences between them uh, set them side by side that sort of thing and i'm also going to do a difference between you know a video about the 40 to 150 pro lens and the um, 40 to 150 kit lens <laughs> which is going to be funny but <laughs> the kit lens is surprisingly capable and light so it's you shouldn't scoff at it So yeah, I'm going to leave you now with uh, footage of the three cameras close together where I'm going to talk about uh, the differences between them visually and uh, then I'm going to close out the video. The Penef, the EM1 Mark III and the EM1X as seen from above. Now we've got the M1X from the back. The M1 Mark III. And the Pan F. And the E3. Now we've got the E3 from the front. The Pen F the EM one Mark Three and the EM one X. Now for a bit of a height comparison between the cameras EM one X EM one Mark Three and uh, Pen F. You can see the Pen, X, the Pen F is diminutive and the M1 Mark III is quite small too, smaller than you'd expect it to be. 
And the M1X, of course, is the beast. Very capable beast. Now, it's worth pointing out that you can't just really say that what they did was they added a vertical grip to it, because if you put it side by side, here, let me grip it with my other hand here and hold it like this, you can actually see that it's a different top design. And it's also thicker here on top. It's a little taller. It's actually a little taller. If you were to cut it off right here, I'm not suggesting you do that, but if you were to do it, you would see that this is actually taller than this. So it's not like they just took this design, pasted a vertical grip onto it. No, they, they took the time to think about it properly and to, um, to make it as usable and as ergonomic as possible. And that's what I love about the M1X. Yeah. So if I were to buy one of these two cameras right now to choose between them, I would choose the M1X just because it fits so much better in my hand and it's so much more versatile and I can use it with the telephoto lenses without worrying about the grip. And it's also got very neat ways, uh, very neat ways to, to be charged. You can charge it via USB, right? And the port for the USB is here, just like it's here. But you can also charge it via, via um, a DC connector that plugs into here. So if you were to use it to film quite a lot, um, which I've used it uh, to film videos with, and it's wonderful. Uh, then just to make sure that the batteries don't run out, you could simply uh, purchase that DC connector separately and charge it right here. Um, and then that way it works infinitely. Now you're saying, well, it doesn't work infinitely because I know that there's a 30 minute limit on video clips um, on Olympus cameras. True. Yes, that's true. But if you were to record the HDMI, uh, the HDMI uh, through the HDMI out port to an external um, um, video recorder, um, and those devices are available and they've been on the market for quite some time now, uh, then there wouldn't be any time limit on both this and this. Uh, they would simply output that video out and you could record as long as you want. So that's kind of neat. And then, of course, if I were to compare the uh, AM1 Mark III and the Olympus, you can see how much smaller Olympus the, the pen is and um, how different the design is. Uh, from the other two. Although I would have to say that the same design DNA is present there. And what do I mean by that? If you have a look at this ridge here, that traverses the top of this camera, you also find it on the pen camera right there, you see? And um, uh, besides this ridge, you also have this top part uh, which is present here and of course also on the M1X this top part right here and um, of course if you get and I believe there was there was one offered a silver uh, EM1 Mark II it was a special limited edition then the top part would have been silver um, aluminum probably just like it is on the Pen F and that's, what I, that's where that silver would have been Kind of neat. All three of them, of course, have this uh, locking mechanism for the mode dial. You see? Um, in case uh, in case you're using the camera quite a lot and uh, perhaps fast in wildlife photography or something, and you don't want to accidentally switch the mode dial, then uh, then this locking uh, mechanism prevents you from doing so. And that's neat. You can also see now if you compare these two cameras that the shutter is different on the two. It's the same shutter button, but um, the wheel, the adjustment wheel, the front adjustment here, is the, the location is different. Here it's been integrated around the shutter button, and here it's separate. And it's, uh, yeah, on the back as well, it's different. But what's going to be neat is to see the design DNA 
how it came forth from the uh, four-thirds system. Now if I take this camera and set it aside, and now I take the E3 and I set it next to it. Now you can see that it's the same design DNA that's been carried forward right here with the adjustment wheel and you can see how much how the grip also got a little thinner between the E3 and the EM1X but it's the same kind of indentation here and you can see how this also got a little more pronounced here on the EM1X and whereas the uh, E3 was a lot more angular so that's it's not straight surfaces but they're always angled uh, and you can really see this if you turn it look how angled it is you see it's just not it's not straight back and forth on the M1X they standardized it a bit perhaps you could call it standardization but it definitely looks nice so I think this shot is neat because it uh, shows the difference in uh, height um, and size from the front if you stack them behind each other. Alright, thanks for watching. Till next time.